The German Panzers are high on the list of the most feared and effective weapon systems of the Second World War. The Panzertruppe has the reputation of being expertly led into battle. They're Mark III's and IV's, Panthers and Tigers, performing extremely well, often against numerically superior enemies. But this perceived tactical dominance does not simply come out of the factories, nor is it born in some politician's back room. It is the product of rigid training, strict discipline, and a strong bond of camaraderie. I'm Indy Nidell. This is a World War II special on life inside a tank. Well, this one is specifically life inside a German tank. We may well do more of these. We've partnered with World of Tanks to make this special. It's a free-to-play tank simulating game. And when new users register with the link in the description, you get tons of awesome bonus items, like, like an Excelsior tank, 250,000 credits, and seven days of premium access. You also get to try out three rental tanks for 10 battles each. The Tiger 131, Cromwell B, and T-3485M. So check it out with the link in the description. Description. And now, the battlefield is a place of unpredictable dangers, of chaos, and a place full of adversaries. The best chance for a tank crew to survive this madness is professional cohesion based on mutual trust and experience. Usually bound to a squad of five, the life and death of a German panzer is determined by the individual skills and motivation of each and every crew member. For this, the Germans have set a strict formal hierarchy within the tank, with the crew being separated into a system-specific allotment of duties. At the top is the commander, who gives the orders and has the final say. A good commander has to lead the tank on the battlefield with, with will, intuition, and experience. His tank crew never really knows what kind of targets will appear, from where they will appear, at what time, at what distance, for how long will they remain visible, so the ability to make quick, firm decisions is his bread and butter. The gunner is second in the hierarchy. An experienced gunner is very valuable, as it is his skills that ultimately decide victory or death, especially in tank-on-tank -tank engagements. Gunners undergo the most rigorous training and are also often chosen as junior non-commissioned officers and future tank commanders. This makes the gunner not just an assistant to the tank commander, but the assistant tank commander. If the commander is absent or incapacitated, the gunner must take over his duties. Third is the man in the driver's seat. Now, the driver enjoys special privileges within the hierarchy because of his strenuous job. See, while the other crew can somewhat relax during a march, the driver is constantly at work. He is usually spared extra duties like, like watch shifts and is allowed to doze off every time the opportunity presents itself because everyone wants the driver to be as well rested as possible. If the tank runs into mechanical problems, it is also his job to ensure that repairs are done. Fourth is the radio operator. One major advantage of the early Panzertruppe is its internal and external radio communication equipment. But to make the technology work, they need well-trained intelligent soldiers that can handle the delicate electronics. The operator knows the technical aspects as well as the details of, of codes, frequency settings, and keying messages. Organizing documents and maps inside the tank is a major hassle, to say the least. Yet, his duties do not end there, since the job is often seen as the easiest. So, outside of combat, the radio man prepares meals, he does the laundry, he keeps the inside of the tank clean. Last, but by no means least in the hierarchy, is the loader. His main task as you may have guessed from his name, is handling the ammunition. This is also a vital task, since the best gunner can only shoot as fast as his loader reloads the cannon. The low status is from the fact that this is basically the entry-level position. Someone with minimal training can become a loader as long as he's physically fit. Depending on the caliber, the shells can weigh more than 20 kilos each. In close combat, he also operates the coaxial turret machine gun. So altogether, the crew is like five fingers of a, of a mighty mailed fist. However, if one of the fingers is not working correctly, then the overall grip is much weaker. During battle, the crew 
finds itself under great psychological stress. Trapped inside a claustrophobic metal box, well, they're also a magnet for every gun on the field. To prevent panic and to know how to handle their duties during complete battlefield chaos, the Panzertruppe drills its tankers rigorously. Pre-war and the first three years of the war, this training can take up to two years. After completing basic army training, the men learn the fundamentals of tank combat and its technicalities. This is things like, like vehicle identification, gunnery, radio traffic, and most importantly, maintenance. In the field, maintaining the tank's mobility is the most important task. While on the move, the crew listens to every sound of the engine and every turn of the running gear. Over time, the relationship between man and machine becomes almost personal, and experienced drivers instinctively feel when something's wrong. Maintenance is generally divided into preventive care and regularly scheduled inspections. Each crew member must familiarize himself with the technical manuals, like, like even the lubrication diagram, and be able to replace parts like road wheel arms or torsion bars. Regular checks quickly reveal potential deficiencies, right? If, if a part's running too hot, needs grease, or is leaking fluid, these regular checks prevent parts from fully breaking down. Tanks are tough, but severe weather conditions and rough country wear them down as surely as battle does. This makes cleaning the tank a never-ending job for the crew. At day's end, even without combat, the men are covered in grease, sweat, and dirt. Hygiene is important, but there is no room for privacy. The men wash and relieve themselves in view of their comrades and close to the tank. A water bucket attached to the gun barrel can serve as, as a makeshift shower, while clothes can dry on the hull. This lack of privacy is, of course, amplified during operations. On the move, the men cannot just get out of the tank and relieve themselves. If need be, they use a bucket or a sack inside. And if one or two of the crew gets, gets a stomach bug or has diarrhea or vomits, then the tank will smell accordingly. The men sit very close together. And there is barely any elbow room. And the insides of a tank can be hazardous without enemy interference. Not only is the engine noisy and the air stale, but sitting next to hydraulic pumps full of hot fluids or electric generators or the rotating turret that can crush a man's limbs is not generally appealing. But no one wants to imagine what would happen if a shell penetrates the hull. This all creates a strong bond between the men. Together they go hungry, Together they get stressed and annoyed at each other. Together they practice the same commands and maintenance routines day after day until they're ready. Then together they fight. Once in the field, the Panzer becomes the crew's home, quite literally. During nightly rests, the men dig a large dugout beneath it to be safe from shrapnel. The Panzer itself is thoroughly camouflaged by the surrounding brush. Over summer, over winter, the tank provides shelter from sun, rain, and snow. Of course, when the outside temperature rises, then the atmosphere inside the metal box grows hot and stifling. When it falls, it becomes a freezer without an internal heating system. And though the idea of a thick winter coat might be comfy, that restricts mobility even more. Heavy rain is almost as annoying as the cold as the tank's insides quickly become wet and slippery. Much of the daily life of the crew depends on how far away they are behind the combat zone, right? Whether they're on the balmy Italian beaches for recuperation or just a couple kilometers behind the lines for refitting makes a real difference. In the case of the latter, the Panzer crew stays close to the battalion's assembly zone to guarantee a constant state of combat readiness. Here, the tank is repaired and rearmed by specialized maintenance personnel. This gives the crew at least some time to rest, play cards, write letters, tend to personal needs. There's always someone within the company who is a barber or can tend to damage uniforms or boots. This is also the time to get additional provisions. Combat rations do not offer much variety, so they're usually supplemented by additional purchases. When sanctioned by the commander, the crew would buy or exchange goods with the local population, like soap and cigarettes for eggs and meat. Meanwhile, the tank undergoes checkups and repairs. It is the commander's responsibility to oversee the maintenance books. 
And in typical German fashion, everything is well recorded. At regular intervals, engines and transmissions must be overhauled and parts replaced. It's common for the driver to receive additional technical training by being sent to the manufacturer's factory for a couple weeks and getting experience on the actual assembly line. In the end, it is the day of battle that ultimately shows the true value of all this training and maintenance. Driving into the combat zone, the commander keeps his hatch open as long as possible. His greatest strength may be his observational skills. Scanning the terrain with binoculars, he judges the terrain for the best possible approach with an eye out for hidden enemies. Once the enemy is engaged, everything must work like clockwork. The driver relies on his own experience and skill to maneuver the tank through the terrain ahead, move into an advantageous position. As the tank comes in range of bullets and shells, the hatches are shut to prevent hand grenades from being tossed in. The men are shaken around as explosions rock the terrain or, or deflect it off the armor. Over the internal radio, the commander leads his crew with short, unambiguous orders. Gunner, high explosive, anti-tank gun, 900 meters, 12 o'clock, fire when ready. The smell of sweat and cordite smoke fills the compartments as gunner and loader do their jobs. The loader has to keep the next shell ready and also finds himself swamped with empty shells, hot to the touch. Only when there is a lull in the fighting though, can he throw the hatch open and toss the spent casings outside while sorting ammunition from less accessible stowage racks. Meanwhile, the radio operator pours over his maps, measuring the distances to the millimeter and relaying their position back to company command. If the crew is adequately trained and works well together, their chances of surviving and succeeding on the battlefield are increased many times. Now, one to two years of training is really excessive with such a need for tank crews as the Wehrmacht has by mid-war. And by May 1943 is seen as both outdated and crippling to the war effort. Under the orders of Inspector General of the Armed Forces Heinz Guderian, this training is drastically shortened from two years to often just 12 weeks. This abbreviated training focuses on battle drills and emphasizes digging in and camouflage. Guderian wants to build on the battle experience of the Eastern Front and focus on the reality of tank warfare. Everything else, the classroom exercises, the parade ground drills, the ceremonies, all goes out the window. The idea is to create a battle-ready unit. Nothing more, nothing less. Of course, many tank commanders protest knowing that it is the training that makes the Panzer so effective, but they cannot deny reality. At this point in the war, the Germans simply need replacements as quickly as possible. As I mentioned at the start of the video, we partnered with World of Tanks to make this special episode. New players can get all the benefits I mentioned with the link in the description, so go check it out. And for you tank enthusiasts out there, here's a video with the Chieftain doing a deep dive into the Tiger One, so you can see how all this works out a little more practically. See you next time.